Okay, grade 11. So today we're going to be doing an isometric drawing. And you'll see I've got a question here that I have made so that you guys can obviously still learn a lot of important concepts that will be relative to you. So let's just get started. So there's an isometric and they've given the front view, top view and left view. So because we are working in thought, third eye orthographic projection, we know our viewing will be top, front, right and left. And because they've given us the front view, top view and left view, we know that this will be our top view, this will be our front view and this will be our left view. Okay. The instructions say make S the lowest point on your drawing. Show all construction and you don't need to show any hidden detail. All right, so I'm going to just start off by taking your 30 degree ruler and drawing a line. And then doing the same on the other side over here, just like this. We're going to label that our S point so that obviously you guys know where to start. And then we're going to draw a line up just like that. All right. So you're always going to start with, like, I always start at the bottom. If some, if you want to start in a block, you can. Some people prefer to start in a block. So I think let's start at the bottom. So I'm actually going to highlight this so that it's easier for you guys to see where we're working. Um, so if you have a look over here, this section here that is pink Is where we're going to start. Okay, so it's got a length of 95. So we are going to take our ruler and we are going to measure 95 on our page over here. All right, so once you've got that measurement, you're going to draw a line going straight up. I see I've forgotten to stick some measurements here, so let's quickly do that. That's my bad. So we've got that one, which is 15. And this one here, which is also 15, which means we will have a total height going up of 30. And so we are going to draw or measure 30. And then we are going to draw a line going across like this over here, as well as the same on this side over here you can just bring the line across and then if you have a look over here this side we've got a length of 80 so we may as well measure that in now and you're going to measure 80 and then at that point you are going to draw a line going up now we want to get our halfway line which we know is 15 so we're going to take our ruler we're going to make a mark at 15 and we are going to draw a line across so if you have a look at the pink side, you'll obviously see that there are angles here at 60 degrees. So as you can see, I've forgotten to put a lot of measurements here. I just draw it and then I expect <laughs> you guys to know. Okay, so that we have an angle of 60 degrees. So normally when you're working with um, angles in isometric, you always have to make an auxiliary view. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start off by drawing a little line like this. And then you are going to draw a height line and you are going to measure 15 on that line. And then you are going to draw that line going across like this over here. Once you have done that, you are going to, is that 15? That's 25. Sorry about that. Okay, 15. All right, so. What you're going to do is you're going to take your angle of 60 degrees. You can put it anywhere on the space that you've made. So we're going to go in both directions like this. There doesn't have to be a certain space around it. And once you have done that, you can draw a sort of block around it. So if you have a look, there's a block over there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our drawing sheet, which has got a measurement of 20. And we are going to measure 20 on our page over here and draw a line going up and we are going to do the same on the other side over here so we're going to measure 20 and we're going to draw a line going up all right so now you'll see that 20 is the edge of the line 
and that the angle goes from the edge of the 20 inwards again. So that means you're going to take your compass and you're going to grab the measurement in the little block from this side to this side, okay? And once you've got it, you're gonna stick it on the height line that we have made and you're going to make a mark and you're gonna do the same on the other side, except you're not gonna go inwards. You're gonna put your mark over there. So I hope you can see it. So let me just do a little bit of a darkening there for you guys. So once you have got those lines, your next step will obviously be to draw them in. You can draw them in solid, and the reason why we know we can draw them in solid is because we're not cutting the isometric first off. And if you have a look here, yeah, there are no break lines. So break lines, I just mean, are like solid lines. So if you had to have a look over here, this is completely solid and right in the front by looking at your top view. Okay, so once you've got those lines in, we're just going to draw in the rest of the shape quickly so that you can see exactly what we've got so far. You will obviously not need to draw this line solid because we know that there is a hole. So we're going to draw that over there. And we are going to draw that over there. Now, because we are looking at it from an angle, we know that we are going to see part of the isometric still at the bottom here, and that will be this part over here. If this one, this side, this line would get a line going across. So you would have, for instance, on this side over here, you would have that. And because it's on the other side, you will have your part going like that. Okay, so it's good to familiarize yourself with how things would look at certain angles. So now we've got the pink bit in. So now for me, I think the best next step would be to get this bit in because it's very easy. As you can see, it's just a straightforward little square, I mean, or rectangle. So you are going to start off by drawing your rectangle in at this point over here. So that you have something that looks like this. Okay. So now the next step that will make things easier for you guys is if you take that line backwards and you take this line backwards over here so that you have this kind of a shape over here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to draw a line from the back going up so that we can get our back measurements in. So judging by the paper over here, we've got 55 and we've got 15 which will give us a total height of 85, but we just need the 55 because we're measuring from the top. So you are going to take your ruler and you are going to measure 55 on that line that you have made. So now you can make two different lines. You can make a line going down here and a line going down here as well. Okay. Then your next step would be to take a measurement of 25 and you're going to basically draw it in solid because if you have a look, your circle only starts after that 25. So we're going to draw that 25 in. So we are going to measure 25. Now at that point, it would be a good idea if you take your ruler and you make a line. So now we want to get the circle in, which is not actually difficult, but it always seems very difficult when you're drawing a circle in isometric. So I'm going to do this in a highlighter so that you can see the lines. So normally when we draw a circle in isometric, we have four little squares we have to work in. And we always use the radius, which we know is 55, to develop that circle. So based on what we have so far, we have this line over here right which is part of our square so we've got 55 going this way and we've got 55 from here so we are going to draw across further this way and further this way and then we are going to measure 55 okay so once you have got that point you're going to draw that line going up and then i'm just quickly going to Stick it in a highlighter so that you guys can obviously see what we're working with so far. So we have got a line over there, a line over there, as well as a line over here. 
and then across we have got a line over there and the line over there okay but we're not done yet because we still need the bottom part so we know a circle looks like this so if you had to section it into four different parts we know that this section looks the most similar to the one in the drawing so it means we've got this one would be one so that would be one two two but we still need three and four okay so we are going to draw lines going down from these points like that we are again going to take our radius and measure 55 and once we have done that we are going to draw lines going across so once you have done that you can or well, i'm just going to highlight it so that you guys can obviously see where we're working but you should have something that looks like this over here okay so it always looks a little bit difficult um well, it doesn't look difficult but it always gets difficult to see these circle lines because they're so many and i mean you're drawing such a big thing with such a little um point so always just keep in mind that you must try and memorize where your lines are because it will make things easier for you at the end of the day so now our next step would be to go from the obtuse angle to the obtuse angle so i always think it's like the big fat one to the big fat one because if you look here this angle is way smaller than this one here so you're always going to go from the big fat one to the big fat one and you're going to do the same on the other side over here obtuse to obtuse okay and then once you've got those two lines you're going to do the same over here you're going to go obtuse to obtuse and you'll do the same over here and you will go obtuse to obtuse so that you have a shape like this all right now we obviously want to get this edge of the circle in so you're going to pick your measurement from this point here and if you want to know a little bit more about isometric circles i do have a video on my page that just discusses isometric circles if that will make things easier for you but basically you're going to grab your measurement you're going to measure to this end point over here and you are going to make your circle okay mine oops i measured mine a little bit too far forward but it's fine i'll just carry on okay now we've got the one edge of the circle but if you have a look at your drawing there's a thickness to the circle which means we need to draw another one so instead of having to draw this entire thing again we're just going to make things a lot easier for you and i'm going to show you a trick so you're going to take the point you measured from and you're going to keep the um, circle measurement that you had on your compass and you're going to draw 30 degrees in whichever way you're going so because we're coming forward we're measuring this way if we were going backwards we would go that way now we know the thickness is 15 because that's what they gave us on our instructions and so we are going to measure 15 just like this over here at that point so now to know where your drawing is going to stop you can take the edge of your circle bit forward here and you're again going to take your compass and you're going to draw your circle from that point using the measurement that you had originally okay so this just makes things easier because then instead of having to do this whole big square thing twice you've got your point and it is perfectly fine also just have a look here see the circle is not actually going to have an edge over here so excuse me for doing that that's on the instructions that's why i did that so we're just gonna fix that quickly because that's not supposed to be like that okay so now we have got our circle easy peasy done we don't need to worry about that anymore because it is completely finished now okay so now the next step is we obviously want to get the rest of this back bit in so we know we've got 25 and then we've got a measurement of 10 for this wall here the thickness and then we've got a length of 70 so we are going to measure 10 firstly on a line going across so i'm just going to use that line over there all right and then we're going to measure across like that and we know that from this length of 15 which we have from our circle we measure 70 from that length 
So we are just going to take our measurement of 70. We are going to get it on that line over there at the back. And we are going to bring that line forward. And we can just connect our entire back right now. So you'll draw in those lines. Just make sure they're not overlapping like mine are. Sometimes my lines overlap because I try to keep my head out the camera so that you guys can obviously see the work. Okay, so it should look like this so far. And then the last little step would just be to get these lines on the bottom here so that it matches with our instruction sheet. And so what we're going to do is we're going to draw that line straight where it touches that line over there. We are going to draw a line going forward and then we are going to draw a line going straight down okay and then so far what you should have will look like this over here all right so now we obviously want to get these points here because they're obviously going to meet together so we would draw that back lightly and then we'll draw this back and you can draw it in solid as long as it touches the edge of the circle over there then you can make the circle line solid as well and you're going to bring your corner lines down and it should touch there we go so that we've got over there but now we're not quite done yet because we've still got a little hexagon in the middle so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure 40 on the side, which we've got over there, and we are going to draw that line across like that, and then we've got a measurement of, I keep forgetting my measurements, this is also a measurement of 40 guys, sorry about that. <laughs> Okay. measurements of 40 and we are going to then draw that across into the same line over there okay so now what we want to do is we obviously want to get our hexagon in and in order to do that you are going to need to get an auxiliary view so you always start off by drawing like a little crisscross on the side for your hexagon you will see that the measurement for the hexagon is 20 so you are going to grab a measurement of 20 just like this over here and you are going to draw a little circle on your crisscross and then once you have done that you are going to draw in these lines right over here yeah, and it should look like this over here. So we're going to just quickly grab these measurements and connect them together so we can obviously get our hexagon. Alright, and then we're going to do these. You're going to draw a block around your hexagon because that's going to make things easier for you once you start drawing. Alright, so you've got this over here. So now your next step would be to take the edge of the measurement like that. Draw a point on the sides of your line. Okay, and the reason why we're taking the point side is because that's where the points of your hexagon touch. So you're going to make marks from the center of your crisscross on your isometric. And then you're going to take this measurement as well, which is obviously on this point over here. And you are going to draw that in. All right. So we're going to draw lines now and I'm going to go over them and highlight it so that you guys can see where we're working. So just give me a second for that. Okay, 
Now let's quickly go over to the highlighter for you guys. So it's kind of like the circle. You have to have like a little bit of a square to work in in order to get where you need to get to. Okay. Should be like that over there. All right. So now what you're going to do is you're going to grab this measurement to the edge of your hexagon like that. And you're going to measure it on two sides. You can measure it on this side over here and on this side over here. And then I'm just going to make it solid so you can see where they are. You're going to bring it across to the other side of the line as well. And then you are going to connect your hexagon together. So that it should look like this over here. And then once it is done, you're going to take these lines of your hexagon going down. That one you don't need to take. And then you're going to measure 15 on each of those lines. Because obviously we know the hexagon goes down a bit of 15. So you're going to measure 15 and 15. So once you've got all of your 15 measurements, you're going to draw that point in over there on your hexagon. You're going to draw a line over there. We're going to connect these lines except you won't see much of this line over here so you only have a little part over there we can make this line solid you're going to connect this line over here and then you'll make this line solid as well and now because we're obviously drawing our drawing store you, and we've got another hole underneath it is always important to check if you'll see part of that slope which you will see we just see a little bit of the slope over there and so you must stick that in your drawing so that you don't forget about it being over there. Okay, so I hope this helped you.